That is not leadership, everybody. That is a failure of leadership. And I, you can boo all you want, but here's the thing. Our faith teaches us that people have to take responsibility for what they do. People have to stand up and take accountability for what they do. That's Republican presidential candidate Chris Christie bluntly criticizing Donald Trump before a skeptical crowd of social conservatives at the Faith and Freedom Conference in Washington. The former New Jersey governor and former ABC News contributor joins us now. Uh, governor Christie, I want to get to that in a minute, but first, you heard uh, Secretary Blinken talking about the situation in Moscow. There's a lot that the United States just doesn't know about uh, what is going down. How would a President Christie be handling this situation? Well, here's what we do know, John. What we do know is that um, America's support, along with our allies in NATO of Ukraine, has done a great deal to cause what we're seeing right now um, in Russia. Uh, Putin's misadventure uh, and all of the missteps that happened by the Biden administration, the Trump administration and the Obama administration on this issue have led to this moment. And I think you have to watch this very carefully, but we have to continue to support Ukraine. We have to give them the weapons they need to fight their battle against the Russians and to repel them. Uh, and I think that what this may do, John, is move us closer to a resolution uh, of this battle uh, because of Putin's weakness that's obvious now inside his own country, I think in large part because of the way he has prosecuted this war. As you know, there are increasingly loud voices within the Republican Party calling for the United States to stop aiding Ukraine. What's your message, including some of your opponents, what's your message to them in light of all of this? That America has never been a great country and the leader of the world by filling in the moat and pulling up the drawbridge. Um, you know, we need to make sure that we're engaged because believe me, this is the first fight in the proxy war with China. China is funding this war for Russia by buying Russian oil. Um, and they are saying very clearly that there is no limit to the partnership between Russia and China. We need to make sure that we continue to engage in this way. We do not want a world that is dominated by communist China. And so this is a fight that America needs to have. It always involves sacrifice. But in the end, at the end of this sacrifice, I am absolutely a believer in the fact that America will be bigger, stronger, richer, and more influential in the world because we stood by our principles and stood by our friends. All right, we heard the reaction to your speech at the Faith and Freedom Conference. I, I assume you well knew you were going to get booed when you started slamming Donald Trump's leadership. I did hear some applause in the crowd as well, but the boos were loud. What, what, what's your sense? Is the anti-Trump message, is there any evidence that, that, that it's resonating? Absolutely evidence is resonating. John, I've been in the, in the race for less than three weeks, and I'm already in third place in New Hampshire, only four points behind Ron DeSantis, who's been in the race for a longer time and is supposed to be the co-front runner. Uh, look, um, people understand that folks need to take responsibility for what they do. And my message to the folks at Faith and Freedom, which did get some good reaction too, but of course I expected the booze that is predominantly a Trump crowd. Um, but they need to hear the truth too. That, you know, character is the single most important element of a president of the United States. Because you can't know every, uh, every issue that's gonna come across a president's desk. It's not a litmus test with check boxes are in them. What you need to know is what is the character of that person? And frankly, when I, I listened to Donald Trump's speech last night, I mean, he had the audacity to say that he got indicted for us. Now, I don't know how it benefited the American people for him to take highly sensitive intelligence and secret documents out of the White House to stonewall the government on returning them for over a year and a half to subject himself to a raid by the FBI, even though they had asked him voluntarily to return this stuff, um, and um, to then be subject to an indictment, which is obviously going to be one of great trouble for the country, because no one wants to see this happen. Donald Trump says that's for us. I mean, it's, it's absurd. Uh, the same way he has absurdly claimed in the last week that he still won the 2020 election. And he said that's how he's going to persuade suburban female voters to vote for him in 2024 that didn't vote for him in 20. Look, 
This guy lost in 18. He lost the Senate and the White House in 20, the House in 18. He lost two more governorships in the Senate race in 2022. He is a three-time loser. We do not need our party to go to a fourth loss because Joe Biden, in my opinion, John, is an awful president. And we can't afford to have him from age 82 to 86 in the White House, or even worse, have Kamala Harris assume the presidency. That's the stakes here. It's not about whether you think Donald Trump has been treated fairly or not by the media or by elements of the Justice Department. It is about whether he is a man of character who can lead this party to victory. And I don't believe he can. I think we know where you stand. Uh, let, let, let me ask you before you go, the question of abortion. Yesterday, of course, was the one-year anniversary of the repeal uh, of Roe. DeSantis, of course, signed into law a six-month abortion ban. Your position, as I understand it, is the states uh, should decide. Do you think that six-month abortion ban uh, makes DeSantis unelectable in a general election? I think it's a six-week six, abortion ban, I'm sorry, six-week. Um, six-week, excuse me, yes. The six-week right. abortion ban, yes. Six-week yes, abortion yes, ban. Yes, yes. Look, John, conservatives like me for the last 50 years have been arguing this is not a federal issue, it's a state issue, and it's something the states should decide. The Dobbs case one year ago gave us the opportunity to let each state make this decision. And what I hope to see is that with each of the 50 states, but more importantly, the people of each of the 50 states deciding this issue, we then could see a national consensus develop. If the national consensus develops, I have no problem with the federal government then stepping in and confirming that national consensus. But I think we should allow the states and the people of the states to be heard on this issue. It's an incredibly important issue. John, I'm pro-life. I've always been pro-life with exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. And I remain pro-life and was a pro-life governor of a very blue state and was elected twice. But these are the kind of issues we need to, we need to be discussing okay. on the debate stage on August 23rd. And as you know, um, the RNC has said you need 40,000 donors to get on that stage. So anybody who is listening this morning, go to chrischristie.com, <laughs> donate a dollar. All Make right. sure we have these debates and the debate like I had at Faith and Freedom. We need to do that, John. All right. Governor Christie, thank you. Good to have you on this week. Take care. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.